I've been told that a picture is worth a thousand words, and considering that a video is just a whole bunch of pictures placed together, I wonder how many words it would be worth. Well, I don't have time to find out. I'm here to tell you how I came up with my mousetrap car. So, I started testing the mousetrap to see how much torque its potential energy was going to throw out. So, here I was trying to turn the torque and use it to throw the nut over the mousetrap and slide the mousetrap under it. But I didn't have all that much luck with it. So I decided to improve on it by adding more weight to the back and weight to the front. Several times I've tried this, it didn't work. So I decided to mess with the length of the arms thinking that I would get a different result. I did, but it wasn't a good result. It just threw it straight up in the air and that was that. And then I decided to put a wheelie bar on and ended up making a slingshot. But that's not what I wanted either. So then I placed the wheelie bar on the opposite side of where I had it last time. I got the result that I wanted, but it didn't work all that well. So I decided to go back with the shorter bar bars to see what would happen. And, well, it snapped the mousetrap. Which, can't really make a mousetrap car without a mousetrap now, can you? So I had to fix it somehow. I don't know how I was going to fix it. I just had to fix it. So right here, I was putting the coat hanger through, thinking, well, I could just remake the hooks out of this coat hanger and have the wheelie bar still in it. So I was marking lines where I wanted to have the coat hanger curved for its hooks. I made them as similar to the hooks that it had in beforehand, and made them curve uh, to fit where the holes that I had to drill out so that the clothes hanger hooks would actually fit in it. And well, yes it did work, or in theory it should have worked, but I wasn't really thinking about what it should have been, because I wasn't thinking about the spring that was on the mousetrap's uh, bar that snaps the mouse and the problem that I ran into is that the spring on the mousetraps bar since my hooks weren't long enough it would just keep pushing up the hooks and pulling them out out of the holes that I had so what I decided to do is take it out re-straighten the hooks straighten them out make sure they would be good, then made a deeper curve, have more length on the mousetrap hooks that I was going to have. So after I had done that and finished putting it through, I curved them back, clamped down, then decided to push through the clamps that it had on there to help secure the front. And right here was a first take of our, of my uh, contraption. So this was a, air quotes, finished project. What we were trying to make, but it didn't work. It seemed to be too light. So what I had to do is, well make it heavier in the back because the back seemed to continue flying up so I before I did that I decided to mess with how it was pushing on it so I lifted up it took away a significant amount of torque lowered it back down just a little bit and it still still launched it as if it were laying back down on the ground Neither of them seemed to be the way I wanted it, so I changed the back wheels to make them lengthier so it would have more, well, space of mass. And it would just keep bell rolling and flipping upside down, and it was frustrating. So I decided to make a reverse car, 
I guess is what you could call it. It can drive upside down and drive front side up. It's like all those cars uh, that are on TV that is like, oh, you can run it into walls and flip it upside down and keep going and all that. But mine, it was a bit harder to make because I didn't have some computer designing it for me. So I got the front end of a dirt bike, sawed it off right at the handlebars, set it down on the front bar that I had, glued both sides of the dirt bike so that it would be secure. I made sure to not glue the wheel because if I had glued the wheel in the axle, it wouldn't be able to move. And I wanted it to be able to move as freely as it would like. So I did that and made it to where it would be able to go nice and free. So, after doing that, I had to test it to make sure that it could go upside down front and back and right side up front and back. And it did favor the upside and here was me putting it in full effect. Right here. Using the screwdriver to push down a little bit on the front of the bar and slide it back. And then here, I wanted to see if there would be a different effect if I just pushed down on the back of the bars. And, well, it didn't work. It was a complete failure. So then I tried it again, hoping that there would be a different result, bending the hooks down a little bit more. But that didn't work either. So I decided to go back to what I was doing and bend the wheels back, bend the bars back up after a few failures of a launch because it didn't seem to be working at all and after I had done that I was seeing a influx in the front of the car it was springing down and then popping back up with f tremendous force but right here I decided well Maybe it might be the spacing of the bars. So I closed them in a little bit to make them closer. And that didn't work. But right here you can see it clear as day. The problem. It was bouncing up and down like a spring. And it was the only thing that was really making this not go as well as we wanted. So what I decided to do was put a, um, a wheel up there so that whenever it did bounce down it would hit the wheel and spin it but right here is where you can see it clear as day it flexing down and then popping back up just like a spring doing its own little bunny hop so in this next clip here I have a wheel attached to help stop its well, destruction of it that didn't work as well as I thought it would so what we had to do is make sure that the back wheels weren't bouncing as much as they were because they kept popping too and it was worse in the back than it was in the front because we fixed the front part so I put a wooden well object under it a cylinder a wooden cylinder to make it roll off and then here was the best one that we've had yet the best launch I have ever had using this mousetrap thank you for watching time for questions question one what are the two types of friction that affect the performance of your vehicle? The answer is air resistance and rolling friction. Question 2. What problems related to friction did you encounter and how did you solve them? Rolling friction was a big problem, a huge challenge to overcome because the mousetrap wouldn't always launch the car in a linear function. Question 3. 
What factors did you take into account to decide the number of wheels you have chosen for your design? At first, I had four wheels to help ensure some stability, but in the end, that's not really what it gave. So, I went over to three, three taller wheels that is, so that whenever it did get flipped over on its back, it could still go. Question 4. Explain how Newton's first, second, and third laws apply to the performance of your vehicle. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon. So, my mousetrap sitting there has been acted upon by the snapper of the mousetrap pushing off of the arms that I have for the launching mechanism. Newton's second law of motion pertains to the behavior of an object which all existing forces are not balanced and clearly on my mousetrap car almost none of the forces are balanced the only forces that are truly balanced is when the mousetrap is pushing against the arm bars but other than that no nothing else is balanced that is okay. Newton's third law for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The opposite and equal reaction on my mousetrap is whenever my mousetrap snapper pushes up against the arm bars that help move it in a thrusting force. Question 5. Dif discuss the effect of the length of the lever arm and pulling force of your vehicle. Well, in my case, it's not like that. Mine is pushing, not pulling. So, there is really no extra length to the lever of the arm that is pulling my vehicle. Question 6. How is the balance of a wheel around its center related to the vehicle's performance? The wheels are centered on the center mass of the mousetrap to ensure a straight trajectory. Question 7. How does the distribution of the weight of the vehicle affect the traction of the wheels? I made mine really lightweight so that it wouldn't be putting too much pressure on the wheels and making it hard for them to spin. And doing this made the wheels be able to spin freely and as fast as they need. Question 8. Discuss the major problems encountered in the performance of your vehicle, and what did you do to solve them? Refer back to the entire video as I explained all the problems I encountered and how I fixed them.